Hi, my name is Andy Glass with Glass Impressions. Today we're going to debut a brand new series called Ask Me CNC. This series is dedicated to educating you, the viewers, on CNC systems and helping make that step into the CNC world a little easier. To get the formalities out of the way, if you'd like to submit a question whether you don't have a CNC, you're a beginner, novice, or an expert, please leave your comment below. I will select one or more questions depending on the degree of difficulty and answer them and go through them in the episode. Stick around, hope you enjoy. In the first episode of Ask Me CNC, we're going to help a gentleman named Sean out. Sean is having a difficult time understanding the concept of switching bits mid-project to do another operation. In order to demonstrate this and help Sean understand this concept, we are going to do a quick project where we do a V-carve on top of a project with a V-bit, then we'll switch bits to a quarter inch end mill and do a profile cut. Let's head over to the computer and design the quick project and then we'll come back to the CNC and get started. Here we are in a Vetric Aspire and I've created my simple project. It is a 7x7 square with text in the middle, ask me CNC to where we can engrave it. I have assigned two tool paths. One is an engraving tool path for the text and the other is an outside profile using a quarter inch end mill for this outside 7x7 square. I should note that the text we are using a 60 degree V-bit. So now with everything designed and the tool path set up, I will go ahead and click my toolpaths and then hit save toolpath. You can confirm you are on the right toolpath by uh, looking up here and ask me CNC is the same one you are trying to save. Now we have to save these separately because they utilize two different bits. We will go ahead and save toolpath to file and I'm going to maintain the file name as askmecnc.tap. I will hit save. And then I will uncheck Ask Me CNC and then check Outside Profile and then click Outside Profile. Again, we can verify that right up here. Outside Profile is the toolpath that's going to be saved to our computer. I will then hit Save Toolpath to File. It will remember exactly my same location I saved my previous one. Again, we will maintain Outside Profile.tap and hit Save. If we go to the 3D view and then go to the Preview tab, and make sure all our toolpaths are selected, we can hit preview all toolpaths and see what all the machining operations will look like at the end. So as you can see, the text in the middle has been engraved with our 60 degree V-bit and our quarter inch end mill has profiled the outside. Now you can see I have two, four, six, eight tabs holding this seven by seven square in the middle so it does not rattle around when it's cut free. We will hand saw and then sand those at the end if this was an actual project. So let's head over to the CNC, we'll secure our material and get started. I use a scrap piece of wood to register the material to the lip that was made when I surfaced my spoil board. I then secure the workpiece with four aluminum hold downs. We design the file using the home position in the middle of the material. I use a tape measure to find the center of our workpiece. At the control panel, I click load G code and find the CNC engraving file we just created. I move the carriage over the workpiece and modify my movement speed to slow to dial in my position. I then can click the zero buttons for both the X and Y axis. I can then use the zeroing touch plate to zero out the Z axis. With the file loaded, we can hit start. To reduce the risk of damaging the workpiece when changing bits, I move the carriage over to the side. Now that we've completed our engraving toolpath, we can put our quarter inch end mill. I move the carriage off the workpiece and over to a location where it's going to be easier to change the bit. I should note I did not change the X or Y or Z home position point. Let's go ahead and change that bit. Now that we swapped out the V-bit for the quarter inch end mill, it's time to bring the carriage back to the workpiece. And we can do this by simply pressing the home button. Now that the carriage is back in the home position relative to the X and Y we set earlier, we now need to reset the Z axis. The Z axis needs to be reset because we did not replace this bit and put it in the exact same position as the very first one, so our Z0 number is going to be different. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the Z0 touch plate. Now that the Z axis has been re zeroed, our new home position has been established. It's in the exact same position, but our Z0 is different than the very first time we did it. Let's head back over to the computer, load up our second operation, and hit start. I again click load G code, and now I find the file outside profile. With the final operation completed, I move the carriage out of the way and remove the clamps and take a look at the workpiece. I quickly use a handsaw to cut the tabs. I then head over to the edge sander to sand them smooth. I hope this simple project and quick demonstration has shown how easy it is to switch bits in the middle of a project. To recap, your X and Y positions of your original home position remain the same. You need to re-zero your Z axis. Now being this is my first Ask Me CNC episode, I want to thank Sean for the first question, but also I would like your feedback. What did I do well? What do I need to improve on? If you have a CNC related question, please leave them below and I'll hope to get to it in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.